Hey guys, uh, this is a sequence of videos on generating solids of revolution and finding their volumes using the disk in the washer method. So my expectation for anything that I'm assessing will be that for these problems, you draw me a fully labeled 3D representation of the shape you're finding the volume of, uh, which includes three trace paths and all the dimensions and the functions labeled properly. Uh, I need an accurately or appropriately labeled representative slice or disk or washer, depending on which technique you're using. And then frequently on exams, uh, especially with multiple choice questions, you're going to be asked to just set up the definite integral that tells you what the volume is going to be. So not actually find the volume, but just stop once you found the definite integral. So let's get started with an example. Let's say we're uh, looking at a region bounded by y equals 3, x equals 1, x equals 4, and y equals 0. And we're spinning that region about the x-axis, or we're rotating it or revolving it about the x-axis. So th the first thing I prefer to do in these problems is to draw a very, very rough sketch of the region that I'm looking at. So this is my xy plane. y equals 3 is some horizontal line. x equals 1 is a vertical line. x equals 4 is a vertical line. So this region is going to get spun about the x-axis, which means that I'm going to have you know, a square at the bottom here, and then this is the region that essentially I'm looking at or caring about. Uh, purpose of this is to zoom in in just quadrant one and quadrant four. This should take you no more than five to 10 seconds. This is literally just trying to figure out, hey, which quadrants should I be embellishing? And then you can take a bit more time and say, I just care about quadrant one and four, and here now we, we want to be as precise as possible. So one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three, four. So this is one, this is four, this is three, this is negative three. So the line y equals three, we only care about what happens in this region between one and four. And we have another boundary at x equals one, which is this line, x equals four, which is this line. First thing you wanna do is uh, reflect this region about the x-axis. So whatever axis of rotation you have, reflect that region about that axis. So that means that is going to extend to here, that's going to extend to there, and then you have a horizontal line which is a reflection of the one above. Now the, the three trace paths. What I mean by that is you pick three points on the graph it's best to pick the endpoints of the in limits of integration if possible. So you have one endpoint at one, you have one endpoint at four, and then pick any other point in the middle. So I'll pick, say, x equals one, or x equals two, rather. And one went missing, so let's put that there. Now, if I were to spin this point across the x-axis, come down, and then go back the other way, that's the path that it would follow. So it would come out towards you out of the screen, go back behind the screen and then come back to where it was. Similarly, this point is going to go here, go back up and then come back around. And then this point would go here, end up on the other side of the axis and then come back here. So this needs to be done three times. You can do it more, but I feel like that's gonna crowd the image even more. Left end point, right end point, and some point in the middle tends to be the safe choice. That, that's, that's going to be the minimum requirement for me. Now, also other things need to be labeled on here. So we obviously have the x hashes labeled. You need to label your function y equals three. And then that's about really it. Now, when we uh, slice this, this is going to be a disk method problem because there's no hole in this solid. So imagine taking your pencil or pen, holding it out in front of you, and then you spin it about some imaginary horizontal axis in front of you. It's going to generate or carve out in space a cylinder. So think of a can of Coke and running your pen like perfectly around the periphery of it. It's going to generate a, a shape that's similar to this. It's solid, it's, it's filled with uh, stuff. There's no gaps in the middle that we have to sort of drill out or account for, for things going missing. So the reason I say that is when we draw a representative slice, it's going to be a solid circle. It's not going to be you know, something with something carved out in the middle. It's just going to be a solid circle. Now here the important part is to represent your radius of cross-section correctly and accurately. When we slice this vertically, the radius of the circle is going to be given 
by the distance between the x-axis, which is the axis of rotation, and the line y equals 3, which is a vertical distance. It's not a horizontal distance. Now think about it this way. Had we sliced it horizontally, then the radius would have been uh, a horizontal distance. But in this case, since we're slicing it vertically, the radius has to be measured and defined and notated as the vertical distance y. Also, at this stage, you need to identify what your thickness is. The thickness is, essentially, it's always going to be, uh, what are you parallel to, x-axis or y-axis? So if you're slicing perpendicular to the x-axis, your thickness will be parallel to the x-axis, meaning the thickness will be an x-value, a very, very, very small x-value. Now, at this stage, we're ready to set up our definite integral. So the definite integral using the disk method will be volume equals where we start slicing, which is x equals 1, where we stop slicing, x equals 4, of the area of cross-section, so pi r squared, and times the thickness, the thickness we know is dx. At this stage, we can recognize that we can integrate from 1 to 4 pi. The radius we saw from this picture was y. So I'm going to put y there with respect to x. But hopefully you remember from before in the course, we cannot integrate a function of y with respect to x. So that y has to be replaced either with an x or with a constant or something else that's not y. In this problem, we know that the radius is always going to be 3. And that's you know something that's true of a cylinder. If you slice a cylinder, no matter where you slice it, it's always going to have the same radius throughout. So think of a can of Coke. If you slice it at the beginning or you slice it at the end or the top or the bottom, the radius of the can is the same at both places. Unlike, say, a cone where the radius is changing based on how far away you are from the tip. So here we can swap this out for integral from 1 to 4 of pi times 3 squared with respect to x, which can be cleaned up to write integral from 1 to 4 of 9 pi with respect to x. I'm leaving finishing this off as an exercise to you guys so you can practice some integration techniques. But if the question had said, set up the integral that gives the volume generated by revolving or rotating the region bounded by y equals 3, x equals 1, x equals 4, and the x-axis about the x-axis, that's what you found. Whatever answer comes out to this problem, that is what the volume will be of that cylinder. Hopefully this helps. We'll see you in the next example.